Do you struggle with hair loss? If so, you need to stop doing these five things to your hair. Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Sung, board certified dermatologist. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you my top five tips for reducing hair loss. A lot of these tips are simple things you can do at home before you see a dermatologist. So tip number one is you never, never want to sleep with your hair wet. Your hair is the most fragile when it's wet. When your hair is wet, the hydrogen bonds in your hair shafts are weaken, and your hair becomes swollen, causing water to build up and cause pressure in the outer cuticle of the hair. These two factors can make your hair more prone to breakage and snap more easily. Think of how easy it is to snap a piece of celery that's like full of water versus a wilted piece that's been sitting in your fridge forever. That's how it is with your hair. Now, a lot of people, they do things to their hair before they go to bed. They wrap it up in tight ponytails, they put it in braids. All these things can stress out the hair shaft and promote breakage. If you sleep with your hair wet, even that movement of your hair against the pillowcase or on your bedding can cause more friction and more fragility. So it's really best to sleep with dry hair and if you just shower before bed, try to blow dry it a little or air dry it a little before you go to bed. Now, have I ever broken this rule? I'll admit I have. I used to do 26 hour call shifts as a resident and the one and only thing I wanted to do when I got home was shower because I felt covered in this like hospital gunk and I wanted to just wash my hair and go to straight to bed because of exhaustion. I passed out. You might do it from time to time. Maybe you're a new mom and really the only time you have to shower is at night after the baby goes to bed. You gotta live life too depending on your circumstances but in general, if you're struggling with hair loss and you're looking for ways to give it the best chance at recovery, try to avoid going to bed with your hair wet. Now, tip number two is stick to loose hairstyles. This is very simple. The way you tie your hair really does matter. Putting your hair in these like slick back tight ponytails or tight buns or using cornrows or weaves, this can apply a lot of pressure on your hair. And it can lead to a type of hair loss called traction alopecia. This long-term mechanical strain on the hair follicles from tension or pulling can lead to hair loss in these areas. So it's best to stick with loose hairstyles like a low pony and use a soft scrunchie instead of like a tight elastic band. And another tip is to avoid playing excessively with your hair. If you tend to wrap it around your finger or you twirl it when you're nervous or bored, try to distract yourself with a stress ball or different fidget tool to avoid putting stress on the hair. I myself have this problem and my husband's always reminding me to stop playing with my hair. It's just a habit that I have. I sit there twirling if I'm nervous or bored. So I have this habit, you might have this habit. Let's work on it together. Now, tip numero three, three, is you want to avoid excessive heat exposure. You've probably heard this from your hairdresser, lots of people, but heat can be very damaging to your hair. Things like curling irons that I just used to curl my hair, flat irons, hot combs, blow dryers, these all heat up the hair and actually weaken it. Excessive use of heat can lead to hair shaft defects like bubble hair and something called trichorexis nodosa. Now bubble hair happens when small collections of air actually form within the hair shaft and create these areas of inherent weakness within the hair cortex. So these are areas that are more prone to breakage. Trichorexis nodosa, which is a long word that should be banned, is when the hair starts to form these tiny fractures and splits with these tiny spurs at the fracture points. These changes can lead to increased fragility and hair breakage. You might not notice that your hair is coming out at the roots, but rather lots of split ends and your hair is like breaking halfway down the shaft. And sometimes you can see almost like these little balls at the end of your hair and it looks weird. So just remember, go easy on your hair and try not to use excessive amounts of heat. And if you do need to use heat like a curling iron or straightening iron, make sure you pick up one of those heat protectant sprays and make sure it's at a temperature high enough to protect your hair and use that regularly. Now tip number four is similar, but different. So you don't wanna overuse hair coloring, perming, straightening, or relaxing. A lot of these chemicals that we use to dye or curl our hair or straighten the hair are drying and can be harsh on the hair. If you're struggling with hair loss, again, it's best to avoid these treatments until you can sort out what's driving the hair loss. I myself stopped dyeing my hair for a few years and I found it was a lot healthier. And then I wanted to go back blonde and I started uh, highlighting it again. It's definitely a little bit more brittle, a little bit drier. So I have to do a lot more to keep it looking healthy. Now, tip number five is a little bit different. You wanna avoid crash or fad diets. The hair follicle is a living, thriving skin appendage, but your hair shaft is actually dead. 
Your hair is largely made up of keratin, which is basically protein. You can think of your hair as one of the least important structures to your body when it comes to survival, as much as we think it's very, very important, especially as women. If you decide to suddenly lose a bunch of weight and you do it really quickly with a crash or a fad diet, it puts your body through a very stressed state. Your body will have to distribute the energy resources to your organs, like your brain, your heart, your kidneys, all those important things. And your hair is at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to keeping you alive. So your hair can be affected by these sudden changes in nutrition, and stress hair loss, or telogen effluvium, is a well-known phenomenon that can be triggered by drastic dietary changes. It's best to stick with a balanced approach to weight loss if that's something that you're working on, and make sure you eat foods that give adequate nutrients and protein, to maintain both general health and hair health. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found these tips useful. Stay tuned for part two, where we dive into things that you can do to help promote hair growth. I'd love if you would subscribe to my channel and look forward to hearing from you.